Let's blow this video up and get me to 500 subscribers. I was never going to pay to see Black Adam, so I waited for it to come out on a streaming service before I watched it. If I had to use one word to describe Black Adam, it would be derivative. But then I remembered that Madonna used it in reference to Lady Gaga, and they are both bitches, so I'll use inferior instead. Unfavorable comparisons to Marvel movies have already been made in reference to this one, but if this is your first time, let me recap some of them for you. Dr. Fate is a poor man's Doctor Strange. Cyclone is a weak version of Storm. Atom Smasher is a shitty Ant-Man. And Hawkman is the unfunny Falcon. The Justice Society is a palette-swapped X-Men organization, even down to the jet hangar underneath the tennis court. Speaking of, Hawkman's jet is just the Blackbird, with a different paint job. Kondok is Wakanda, except that it is in a shitty desert, and everybody knows where it is. Not to mention that this movie has two versions of Vibranium, called Eternium and Nth Metal. So, yeah. Now, before you nerds jump on me and say that the DC stuff came out first in the comics before Marvel, first let me remind you that you suck. And second, nobody is going to stop and fact check while watching the movie. So for all intents and purposes, moviegoers are going to say Marvel did all of this first. Finally, Black Adam himself is literally a morally gray Shazam with all the same powers. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's point out the terrible story decisions. Why didn't the Shazam kids come and fight Black Adam? I mean, couldn't the wizard Digimon have set up a warning system at the Rock of Ages or whatever? Instead, the Woman King calls in some B-tier scrubs to fight Black Adam. Maybe Superman was like, nah, it'll be fine. Send in the crew of jobbers to have a look-see. I'll get to Superman in a minute. Count on it. Overall, the movie was a two-hour stroke fest for The Rock. Nothing poses a threat to him, and he crushes waves of generic mercenaries. Then we get a meaningless fight between the not-Avengers and Black Shazam because the Justice League did it first. We finally get introduced to Sabak in the final quarter of the movie, and he can actually hurt Black Adam. The two fight for a bit, then Hawkman, Cyclone, and Adam Smasher join in and dogpile Sabak, while Black Adam rips him in half. So here are some of my thoughts. The characterization of Black Adam is a baffling one. For starters, he acts aloof while at the same time being a dick. He smashes through walls for really no reason except he's an asshole, I guess. As though he wasn't a normal person for most of his life until getting Shazam powers. He kills a lot of people, but they're bad guys, I guess, so it's okay then? He says he doesn't care about being a hero, only to turn off his Shazam powers later and agree to go into prison. These choices are so polar opposite that this character comes off as a cartoon. So how can we fix this? Well, to begin with, the movie is way too long and stuffed with filler. The inclusion of the Justice Society bloats the story with too many characters. We already have the mom, her brother, and son, plus the mercenaries and the people of Kondok. Adding Waller, a.k.a. the Woman King, the Justice Society, and Sabak makes everything too busy. If I had a chance to edit the screenplay, the movie would have remained in the past. I think the only reason this film was set in the modern era was to set up the post credit scene between Superman and Black Adam. To be honest, I think the whole movie was built around that post credit scene. The movie had to show us that Black Adam was a killer, which Superman is not. Well, mostly. The movie had to show us that Black Adam is the strongest ever and has powers equal to Superman. The bulletproof scenes, the beating up other superheroes, the super speed, the super strength. Even the fight 
in the boys' bedroom destroys all the Justice League hero posters and memorabilia. So much focus was spent on building up Adam as Superman's equal that the actual movie story was paper thin. Black Adam has his origin set in ancient Kondok, and I think the entire movie should have been set in that time. Shazam 2019 took place in a modern setting. In order to be distinct, Black Adam should have been a historical fantasy. I really think this movie is a near-total teardown. So here is what I proposed based on everything we have seen on screen. I think the story should begin with the war between gods and demons. Six demon lords agree to merge together, becoming a super being called Sabak. Sabak enters heaven and begins killing the gods. In the end, only six gods remain to face Sabak. Sabak is more powerful than the six individual champions, and he delivers grievous wounds to each one. In a desperate act, Amun-Ra stabs Sabak with a piece of Eternium. The Eternium absorbs Sabak's essence and then shatters and falls to the earth below. The attack on Sabak inflicted a lethal wound, and before he is overcome, he unleashes all his remaining energy, killing himself and the six gods. The movie shifts to Earth, where thousands of years later, a wicked king has risen to power. This king has enslaved his people and is looking for Eternium. The king has found a shard of Eternium, and this element whispers to him that if he finds the other six pieces, he will have ultimate power. Next, we pick up to Teth Adam, and this time it's his brother, who I've named Amun Set. Both are slaves tasked with finding Eternium. Amun Set finds a shard, and it tells him that if he can find strong heroes, they can overthrow the evil king and be free. The movie will progress with the brothers collecting a merry band of heroes with unique abilities. They find a priestess that can control the wind, a sage with great intelligence, a messenger that can run at great speed, a soldier with unfailing courage, and a miracle child that has been struck by lightning many times and is never hurt. This motley crew will learn to fight together on their way to defeat the evil king and his army. As released, Black Adam could have been really great. Many of the elements were there, just not capitalized on. The word Shazam summons the power of ancient Egyptian gods. Shu is the god of stamina, wind, and flight. Horus has super speed. Amun-Ra has strength. Zahuti has wisdom and magic. Aton has energy. And Menthu has courage. I would have this motley crew travel around with Adam and Set. They would be the mortal avatars of these ancient gods. We could even repurpose some of the existing actors to fill these roles. Hawkman could be recast as Menthu, the god of war and courage. Dr. Fate could be Zahuti, the god of magic and wisdom. Cyclone would be the goddess Shu, who controls the wind and stamina. Now, Adam Smasher doesn't really fit into this new narrative, so I would eject him and have two new additions. These two new additions would be the god Aton, who would be characterized as a child, and the god Horus, who I would cast as a teenager. Finally, Teth Adam would be revealed to be the reincarnation of Amun-Ra, the god of creation and strength. In their mortal forms, these gods are severely limited. Horus would run quickly, but not at super speed. But he could outrun any mortal. Aton could summon lightning from a storm, and it would come down and strike him, and its blast would radiate outwards. Shu would be able to summon windstorms and tornadoes. 
Zahuti can see into the immediate future and be able to read any language. Menthu is an expert tactician and is fearless in battle. Amun-Ra is stronger than any mortal. While the brothers have been searching for the mortal gods, the evil king has collected five of the six shards. The dream team returns to Kondok to face the king and his forces. Shu summons a sandstorm, while Aton calls down lightning, and these two will cut through some of the king's army. Horus runs through the army making quick attacks, while evading the soldiers with his speed. Zahuti works his way through the army flank with surgical precision. He sees every attack before it happens and moves before his attacker can. Menthu, Adam, and Set charge straight ahead. The trio smashes into the blinded troops. The team makes it to the throne room. The king and his guards attack. The king has absorbed five of the shards of Sabak and is now very powerful. As before, the six gods attack. The king has forged the five shards into a sword. With it, the evil king wounds each god and restores what he lost during the first battle. Now only Adam remains. Before the king can strike him down, his brother Set plunges his shard into the king's back. Set grasps the shard tightly as the demon power begins flowing from the king and into him. While the transfer is happening, Zahuti calls out to Adam. He begs him to join his power with the others before they die, and Adam agrees. The dying gods place their hands on Adam, and together they all shout, Shazam. The demon transformation is complete. Amon Set has been reborn as Sabak. The demon looks over as a bolt of lightning strikes down in the chamber. His brother Adam walks out of the smoke. The demon wears the face of Set, but Adam has the voices of five gods ringing in his mind demanding revenge. The combined will of the dying gods commandeers Adam's body, and he attacks the demon. The dying gods finally get to finish what was started so many eons ago. Fire and lightning blast through earth and stone. God and demon take to the air, each landing heavy blows. The voices of the dying gods begin to cease one by one. The voice of Sahuti enters one final word, Eternium. Adam faces the demon, looking for any hint of his brother, a nod, a wink, anything. His scrutiny is met with cold demonic hatred and seething rage. The winds of Shu launch Adam at the demon. The lightning of Aton flashes from his hands, tearing into demonic flesh. The intelligence of Zahuti and the battle cunning of Menthu goad the demon into chasing Adam back to the ruined throne room. With the strength of Amun-Ra, Adam retrieves the Eternium sword and drives it into the heart of Sabach. Sabak begins to glow as eldritch fire begins erupting from the demon's skin. Amun-Ra remembers this, and with the speed of Horus, Adam flies into space with the demon and hurls the creature into the sun as he explodes. Black Adam returns to Kondok and frees the slaves. He helps the people rebuild the city. He sits down on the throne as the ruler and protector of his people. So how did I do? Did I write a story worthy of the gods? Perhaps you're thinking, not bad, but that end credit scene with Superman was awesome and needs to be in this movie. Easy. The credits roll for a bit, and then we cut to a burning modern city with a subtitle that says, In the Future. Black Adam is floating above the carnage and shouts, Is there no one worthy to challenge me? We hear the sonic boom, and Superman emerges from the smoke and says the same thing. Blah, blah, blah. We should talk. There. Happy now? 
I'll even go a bit further. How does Black Adam get to this future? Assuming that he isn't running around for 5,000 years. Adam falls in love with a woman in the past. They have some kids. She eventually dies of old age. Adam is heartsick for hundreds of years, never able to meet another so special. So he decides to cast a spell that will cause him to sleep and not awaken until she is reincarnated and walks the earth again. And I'm spent. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time.